Hello, good day to you, our viewers, and welcome to a successful living talk show that's been brought to you by IIU. I am going to be your host today. My name is Shola Adiola, popularly known as Sojibra. And with me here is our guest, our wonderful guest, teacher Funke. But before I talk more about her uh, or call her, uh, bring her on board, I would like to introduce IIU to you once again. IIU is an international internship university. It's a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs globally. It's a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. In a short span of time, IU has spread its wing in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Panditsa, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. And like I said, I would also like to introduce our guest to you. Here with me today is um, Funke Akpan, who is popularly known as Teacher Funke. She's an experienced educator with over 13 years teaching experience. She has worked in various capacities as teachers, head of knowledge department, editorial board member, and a host of others. She's currently studying English language at the prestigious University of Lagos, that's in Nigeria. And she's doing this so that she can provide quality services in her profession as an educator. She became an Ed Puzzle coach and a Microsoft Innovative Educator expert. All of this is also to enable her to provide uh, quality services. She believes that education should be beyond just academics in the classroom. And this made her introduce connection-based connection -based learning in a classroom where our learners can connect with different classrooms from all over the world. From being an empathical educator who spreads kindness and empathy to being awarded an empathical ambassador. Well done, Teacher Funke. She's also a Google Digital Skills Ambassador, an Adobe Creative Educator, Digital Citizenship Tutor and Convener, a Social and Emotional Learning Activist, Black Girls Tech Summit Ambassador 2022, and an SDG Advocate for Nigeria. Over the years, she has facilitated training webinars and workshops on project-based learning, 21st century teaching methodologies, digital citizenship education, and social and emotional learning. She's the founder of Top Flighters Academy. There's something that is missing here, so, but she's going to talk, tell us about it. Top Flighter Academy is an educational institu institution founded in 2019. It is aimed at providing training to educators on 21st century teaching tools, methodologies, and strategies. She also offers services on digital citizenship education. Teacher Funke, you have powerful profile here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to be asking you to tell us more about yourself. So what I would expect you to tell us is that one thing that is that has not been captured in this your profile that I've read? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So yes. can you tell us more about yourself, Teacher Funke? Okay, thank you so much, man. Thank you, um, Mrs. Shola Dolan. A big thanks to the organizer of this program. Thank you to the whole IIU team for having me on board. It's a great privilege, which I'm not going to take for granted. 
Having said that, um, a little bit about myself, as she has rightly said um, during the profile she read, I am teacher Funke, and then I have more than um, 13 years teaching experience in the classroom. And the one thing that was omitted from the profile is that recently um, I launched an online school, which is called Subflighters Online School. So we are we at Subflighters Online School. We give high quality and affordable online education to children between the age of five to 17. As it is now, we don't have much online schools. Let me just talk about Nigeria. So we are coming on board as one of the first people to launch this. After the COVID-19, after the um, COVID-19 pandemic, every, most, every class has to go online. So then after that, the most people have that the um, online presence has, has really reduced when it comes to learning. So we want to bring that back to life. So one of the reasons why we started of flight as online school. So even from the comfort of your home, you can always have access to affordable and high quality education. So that's on top flight as online school. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, what you're saying is that COVID came and we were all forced to go online. I mean, take our school online and then yeah. COVID left we went back to our usual so leaving behind the lessons that we've learned but what inspired you now is that you don't want that to happen you just want us to maintain the momentum because nobody knows uh, what's going to happen what's still coming and obviously that's just the future of education we have to just like what we have now so i get that now the question i will ask next is this you have this passion to you know, sustain what we have online, schools online, right? And here you are studying English. So what, why, why did you go back to school to study English now? Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Um, during my national certificate in education, I actually did primary education studies and English language. So to enable me to have much more knowledge um, on English language, I had to study it in my degrees. So I, aside that also, so it's one of my personal interests. Growing up, I love to read books. I love to watch English movies. So for me to continue in that trend, I decided to study English language. And aside that to be relevant in my field, I need to acquire more knowledge and more skills. As it is now, not just as it is, as it, in the world today, knowledge keep increasing. So if you are just staying in one place, you don't get to acquire more knowledge, you're going to be obsolete. So you, I don't want to be obsolete in my in my career, in my profession. So that makes me to further. Even after this, by God's grace, I'm still going to learn more. We don't stop learning until we are dead. So once we are alive, we keep learning. We, become, uh, we should be um, a student of knowledge. We should be a lifelong learner. So that's one of the reasons why. To pursue. Okay, now you're talking like a teacher that you are. I mean, everybody knows that as a teacher, a 21st century teacher for that matter, should be a lifelong learner. Yeah. And that's what you're just trying to do. So whatever it is, you can lay your hands on, as long as you you're, you find it interesting. So that's good. That's good. Okay, so can you just describe to us um, some of the training sections you've facilitated okay all right ma'am um i've done over the years i've done several trainings basically on 21st century teaching methodologies um, um i'm a fan of differentiated instruction in the classroom what that means is that in the classroom we have different learners in our classroom who come into the classroom with different learning needs. Just like you have in an hospital, we have um, a doctor with different patients. So even if uh, a set we have like two patients having, let's say for instance, malaria, they are not going to take the same treatment. Some of them would prefer to have injections, some would prefer to take tablets and the like. So even in the classroom, we have different learners in our classroom. They have different learning needs. They have different teaching styles. Not all the learners in our classrooms learn the same way. So that is why I love differentiating my instruction. So most of the conferences of seminars or trainings are facilitated that basically on differentiated instruction. So having said that, this is going to be further on 
one 21st century teaching methodologies and then talking about flipped lesson, have to flip lessons in the classroom. You don't just come to the class, just teach, 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 keep talking. There's need to reduce um, the teacher talking time. So flip lessons allows teachers to reduce their talking time and then to have more student talking time in the classroom. So most of my trainings, I do trainings on um, flip lessons, gamification, connection-based learning, how you can connect to different classrooms from different parts of the world. And it is now we don't need to do this on our own. We need to, we are raising global leaders. So connection-based learning helps you to have access to diverse classrooms from different parts of the world. So these are some of the trainings that are facilitated, um, game-based learning, flip lessons, connection-based learning, and also 21st century teaching methods, because we need to keep learning all of this to be relevant in the 21st century as teachers. Yes, wow, so that, that reminds me, I'm sorry, sorry for cutting you. I've also had um, trainings on digital citizenship. That basically, over the years, we've done more on enlightening the younger generation on how to use tech for good. And also I do trainings on social and emotional learning. I've noticed during the pandemic, I noticed that so many young people really, they committed suicide during that time. So one of my research says that social and emotional learning is absent in classrooms, even in families. So I began, to, I did a study on that. And then I began to, um, I began to have um, webinars talking about social and emotional learning. So. Okay, so you have so much on your plate, Teacher Funke, and you're really doing well. So all these things put together, I would say that you're just um, out to ensure that the, the children, the learners we have now, get the best out of the classroom. So ranging from the way the teachers deliver their content in the classroom to how the, they are being treated, to their emotions, talking about uh, flipping of the classroom to that's also talking about teaching children the way they want to uh, yeah. learn like they do say that um, every child can learn not every teacher can teach so exactly. I, I can see your passion is just written even all over your face pardon me so so I'm gonna ask you this <laughs> that you have a lot you have the you have top flight academy if i'm not mistaken then you have the online school and i see how you you're really pushing that you're doing well and all of these things too and then you run your own so how do you balance running your own and working as a passionate educator like this how all right, thank you for that question, Ma. So one of the things I do um, is to ensure that there is balancing, so that's to create a balance. And one of the thing is that to allocate that um, time, okay, let me just put it this way, to prioritize, that's what it is, prioritize, to prioritize my time. And most time what I do is once I'm at work, I ensure that I follow the tasks that I've planned for that day. I ensure that I don't bring school work to the house and i don't take home to the school because if you do it that way you're not going to be focused you're going to be you're going to have a divided attention so i ensure that when i get to work even before i go into work i write down the things i need to do at work that particular day to ensure that there is no spill over probably i need to bring some works home to grade Okay, so most times at work, I ensure I finish my work for that day. And then when I get to my ensure that everything that I'm doing at home, I even my personal time with my husband is it's nothing is nothing is interfering with it. So priority, work is work and the home is home, family is family. The other thing I do is to communicate with my spouse. Having a spouse that is supportive and understanding also goes a long way. Even if I prioritize my time and then my spouse is not supportive or does not understand what those, those things that I need to do is not going to work. So I prioritize and also I've been able to communicate with my spouse. Most times when I have to do um, webinars, I will need to have more time around that. So we get to talk about it within this particular frame. I may not be able to give it that full or 100% time I do give you before, but just I um, just um, bear with me for this particular time. Probably when we have like two, three hours of personal time, then there could be a reduction, probably one hour from it. So priority and then communication with my spouse also goes a long way with that. And then also setting up boundaries. 
I've mentioned that when it comes to power, setting of boundaries, you set boundaries, communicating also all the time. Also, this goes along with setting boundaries, prioritizing, and then having effective communication with my spouse. That's things I do. Okay, so that that's 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 powerful. Focus. You mentioned focus. Because if you lose focus, it's a problem. Even if you try to prioritize and you lose focus at the end of the day, the time that you set out to allocated to items will not be maximized. So focus, prioritize, effective communication. And then you also mentioned spillover. You don't allow spillover. Most of the time we find ourselves doing that and it, it could be overwhelming. Yeah. You I see that you are really managing your time and we are learning from you, teacher. Fouquet. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, my uh, you, you, said, you said so much. And I also see part of the things that you're doing is also to see that younger people you're, you're come up to do well, right? Those are just coming up now. They grow up to do well so what advice do you have for people who are trying to discover their passions and career paths okay thank you ma'am so i think one of the one of the things they need to do is first of all to discover themselves so how do you discover yourself you need to have a time to reflect self-reflection as it is in the old world you are unique young people are everyone is unique even as it is now we are unique and then we are just one Okay, there is no and there is no other species that is as great as we have. So one, you need to take time to self-reflect. What are the things that you love to do? What motivates you? What is that thing that keeps you out of bed every day? So you need to discover that. And after discovering that, also advise that younger people should try and explore new opportunities. Gone are those days that you just fold your hands that if this doesn't work and that's the end. So we should, younger people should try and explore new opportunities. Don't just stick to a particular path. You can't, you can't really say if the other path that you don't want to try is actually what's going to bring you to limelight or what is going to actually bring out the best in you. So young people should not just stay on one path, try out new things. In the case of trying out new things, you learn more, you learn, you gain experiences, you gain experience at different, different um, learning, you gain experiences at different work or um, career that you've tried. And then once you reflect, you explore new opportunities that you need to be teachable. If you're not teachable, there is no way you are going to discover yourself. There's no way you're going to give room for even mentorship. Because you, you don't really know everything about yourself. There are some times that people actually from a far distance, they get to understand the rest. So you have people around you who can be mentored, who can tell you, okay, um, over the years, I've seen that you're very good at this part. I've seen that you can do more here. So if we are not teachable, there is no way we can be mentored. So I would advise that young people are teachable, they explore new opportunities and they take time to reflect on themselves. Almost every now and then reflect, what, do, what are the things that motivate me, what keeps me up uh, every morning and then really for as an individual there is a particular reason why god has created every individual even if you're a twin there is no twin that has the same purpose so you need to sit down and discover your own purpose on yourself look within you what are the things that you like to do that makes you different from other people and once i've discovered that we focus and ensure that nothing distracts you from pursuing that goal of yours Okay, um, as an educator, what are some common misconceptions people have about being a teacher? You know, I'm sure you know that even when you were in school, I don't know, some people chose teaching by choice, but I would say that only a few people chose teaching. Other people want to be a doctor, a pilot, a lawyer, an accountant, and all that. So what are the uh, common misconceptions people have about being a teacher? All right, I'm going to just talk about um, three of them. One is that people see teaching as a fallback profession. That is, since there are no other jobs, they're not able to get jobs in the bank, in the engineering field, in the um, as a medical doctor, then the next thing is that, let me just try out teaching. So they see it as a fallback profession. 
question, future that does not need much, you don't need much criteria, you don't need much knowledge to be a teacher, which is not true. And then also they see teaching as an easy job that even if I do not go to a college of education, I should still be able to handle teaching. And that is why we have so much um, kids, we have so much um, fall back in the teaching profession, because we have almost everybody, even those that have the right knowledge and skills and those that do not have it. So that really, really goes along. We see that as an easy job. And meanwhile, teaching is not an easy job. It's not something that is very easy. Imagine having like 20, let's say in the public school, we have like 50 and above in the class. Imagine having to handle 50 people at the same time. So teaching is not an easy job and the world sees it as an easy job as well as any day can, I can just come in and start working. That is not true. And the lastly is that we see teaching as something that is not innovative, that you don't need much knowledge, don't need to have more skills, you don't need to be creative. Once you can talk, you can read, then you can become a teacher. I say no to that. Teaching really requires innovation you, okay um you've spoken well that that's quite true so when i look for job and well i i studied education anyway but i know quite a lot of people so they, there's no job there's no job and so it's teaching i can always get teaching job some that's where that's part of the reason why we are where we are it's true Okay, so what are the key skills you think teachers need to excel in, in today's world as a teacher? The skills that you should have and you should excel in. All right, thanks for the question, ma'am. Um, so in today's world, basically, what teachers, the skills teacher needs to excel in today's world are basically the 21st century skills. We have the communication skill, we have the critical thinking skill, we have um, creativity, we have um, collaboration. Okay, so talking about communication, teachers need to be able to communicate effectively with the student in the classroom, even with parents and also with their team leads or whoever they are working with. And not just communicating effectively, they should be able to give feedback. Not just having to give feedback, when feedback, uh, when we have feedback being given to us as teachers, how do we interpret it? Okay, how do we take feedback? It's very, very essential. Communicate effectively and the ability to work to give feedback and then to accept feedback, not in the negative side. Uh, okay, so another one is um, critical thinking skill in this generation. So if you don't have it as a teacher, there is no way you can give it out to your learner. So we need the ability to think critically even when we are under pressure. And also talking about collaboration, so one of the things that actually made me to really love uh, one of the platform I belong to that's in particular is the ability to collaborate. When I when I started earlier as a teacher, I was actually most I was thinking about ah what can I do? I don't know what the other teacher in let's say grade one is doing. I don't know how she's teaching. How can I can actually see how she's teaching and they've been able to learn from her. So when I stumbled upon the practical platform, I was really happy that okay now I can not just I'm not just going to be able to see how um, a teacher teaches, but now I can even travel outside of my classroom. So in this day and time, we need collaboration, not just with teachers outside the country, but even within ourselves. As teacher, teachers to teachers, student to teachers, even student to student, they need to collaborate. It goes a long way. But when you collaborate, you have the team spirit. You have um, one a united um, class or united um, school. So basically, those are the skills that we need um, in this age and time as teachers. Okay, so effective communication skills, critical thinking skills, and collaboration. All right, the last question before we call it a day today, is um, how do you see your work evolve in the future? Hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Ma. Um, let me see. Okay, let me talk from the aspect of Top Flighters Academy. Although we, we do a lot of things, and basically everything that all the training set that we do on Top Flighters Academy is to raise holistic, um, holistic um, global leaders. What I mean by holistic is, in every area, students were academically sound, they're also morally sound, and also digitally sound. So how I see myself evolve is to be able to ensure that all of these, um, mostly teachers, 
probably in the global space, are able to ensure that in that classroom, they are raising holistic learners. Learners who are sound academically, morally. And coming to Top Lives Online School, my dream is to ensure that the, few, the children of today are being prepared for the workplace tomorrow. Children today are not just in the class. I, I, I want them to be able to have this sustainable education, not education that after that, once they leave a particular class and whatever knowledge you gain, leaves them. Okay, so we want sustainable education as a teacher, as a student, as everyone together sustainable education that's what i um what my goal is it to the parents to the teacher and to the student also okay so i wish you well in all your endeavor and i trust the grace of god upon you obviously you're doing well already so um do you have any message for you know iiu people watching us right now before we call it a day Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, once more, I want to thank IIU for this privilege and also uh, Ms. Shola for this privilege also. So what I would like to say is that in this time and age, we need to be open-minded. If we open-minded as teachers, when every, wherever we find ourselves, and also once we are open-minded, we are going to have the opportunity, there'll be opportunity for change to take place. So if you're not open-minded, nothing, no good thing can actually come in. So in the place of being open-minded, you get to accept most time good things, good opportunities, even global opportunities get to come in. So as teachers, I will advise that we have open mind, we are open-minded and also we should continue to be lifelong learners. Let's not stop learning, let's not stop developing ourselves. Okay, whenever there is a chance to learn from someone or from a platform, always seek growth at all times. So growth is something that we should always aspire, always aspire to become a better version of ourselves. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. So you're leaving us with the fact that we should not resist change because change is a constant thing. And then it's something that we continue to go on and on and on. Thank you very much, Teacher Funke. And we've come to the end of today's section. Thank you, uh, Emmy. Thank you, IIU. And I'm also grateful to our viewers. Thank you and bye for now. Thank you. Bye.